I give you time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, my name is Kazuaki. Uh, I'm from a company called Kruger, based in Tokyo, Japan. And I'm also, also working on a project called Connectome. And then I will talk about how blockchain ensure the reliability of data and AI. So today I will talk about what we do first. And also I will quick review of AI history and its composition right now. And also I will like to point out the problem of AI industry right now. And also I'll, I'll share with you some solutions regarding to reliability of AI and its data sets. So um, it's, it's called connectome. It's an official science, uh, human science term. Of, um, the connectome is a comprehensive map of neural connection of the brain. So basically it's a diagram of a, a, a nervous system uh, based on Wikipedia. And uh, also our project is called Connectome. Basically our vision is towards a world where human beings can trust AI. And also we provide some technology and human beings. So we provide some uh, AI assistant with, uh, with uh, human look, human-like visuals. So uh, um, I'll show you some demo. Hi, Rachel. Looks like we have a visitor. Yes, I am. Uh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Nice to meet you. I am Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Where are you from? I'm from Germany. You came from far away. That's true. Have you been to Germany? No, I have not, but I will be going there in May. If you have any questions about me, please ask. How old are you? That is a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Shibuya, Japan. What do you do, Rachel? I am working at Cougar as an assistant. I can provide some assistance for you. What's your hobby? I have started to learn dancing recently. Oh, can you dance for me? Okay, I will try. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to talk about the definition of dancing, but that's 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 her definition. Thank you. You are welcome. So that's, that's the Rachel that we are, are developing right now. And then I'll, I'll talk about how, how it will relate to the, uh, the security of data and AI. So uh, basically AI is kind of like a training model. So that's AI. And then if, if you want to use AI in some systems, um, basically, you have to have you have to give some input to the AI, and then you get the output as a result. So, input is uh, for the Rachel side. Uh, input is also called comprehension AI, and the Rachel has a vision which does object detection and face recognition. Remember, you know, the Rachel start saying, "Hey, hey, Atsushi," or "Hey, hey, someone." That's a face recognition feature. And also um, scene recognition, either the person is sitting or dancing or, or walking or whatever. And also, of course, as you know, um, the Rachel has a sound voice recognition. So that's, that's the input version. And also as an output, um, they do evaluation. If, if Rachel know the person right in front of her or not, and also uh, another version of uh, output action is a character AI also, which is called, called the game AI on the game, game industry. So uh, the game AI is a little bit different from a current AI system that you are using. Uh, because the game, game AI, uh, you have to change dynamically based on the output. And then uh, based on the output, 
the decision making process will be changing on the real time. So on our system, uh, we provide some scenario data, which, which is uh, just like a um, simple script version or based on the, uh, the reaction of our uh, output. So uh, I would like to point out the uh, AI problem right now. It's, it's, uh, if, if you are uh, uh, engaged in the AI, you already know that AI situation is currently in the black box. Because um, in order to create some train model, you have to have, a, you are required to have tons of data sets. And also you are required to have a resources which stores data or, or the person who, who put the label, who, who give you the correct answers. And also that will cause the data silo. And then they, they are stored in the black box because you don't want to share it to somebody else. Or you don't want to share it to competitors because the data or correct data is so much valuable today. And of course, those you know, tech giants are doing it. Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, Uber, or Alibaba in China. So I would say AI today is not trustworthy. Uh, you might already know uh, smart speakers like Amazon Alexa or Google Homes has a bug. And also, you know, you never know those speakers are currently monitoring your conversation or not. How can you guys tell? And as a counterpart of those uh, black box AI, uh, currently XAI or explainable AI hype is, uh, is a trend right now. Um, XAI is basically uh, the idea is the based on the output coming from a, a train model, you have to be, he has to be uh, uh, explainable why, why your, your AI made this kind of decision. But, but there's also a trade-off of uh, explainable AI because in order to make explainable AI, that AI or tra uh, train model has to be real, has to be, um, has to do only like very simple task, vice versa. If you want to do some like complex um, detection on the AI side, it's really hard. It's make it's really hard to make that a uh, train model as explainable. So in order to tackle those problems, uh, we develop uh, one like um, the project called GeneFlow that was uh, proposed at uh, Edocon Toronto last year. So this is a, a very simple overview. We have like three entities. The, the basic idea here is um, we would like to store the data sets and then script. And then after the epoch, training epoch, and then when we got train model, we, we create it as a package and then store in the Ethereum blockchain so that we can always like trace the growth history of AI. So when we, uh, Usually, like when, once we, you got train model, you have to keep updating with the new data sets, right? So once we get like new data, so we update the script and then we create another transaction and going on and on like this. So, you know, once AI got rogue or AI got a uh, bug or something, you can always trace back once when uh, your train model was working correctly. So that's a basic idea. And there, there are lots of um, AI in a blockchain um, project that they are working on this kind of project, more like security or providing a, a secure environment. So I really recommend you to check that out. <clears throat> so this, I would say, you know, as in one option, uh, the comprehension or input AI is, can be safe using those kind of technologies. So what about those two decision-making process and an action, uh, reaction process? So um, the simple idea of decision-making process is something like this. If my AI or train model have received some input and detects something, uh, do, do something. So that's a basic idea. For example, uh, the object detection, if you get some, some input uh, as a pictures, 
And then if you detect some person, you know, uh, give a reaction as a person. So the very simple version. And then, but from our point of view is quite different because you only get the output from AI, right? And then like people think, you know, there's some magic happening inside of your AI. So like maybe your your once your AI got rogue, you never know, and you know we have to we have to uh, you know because uh, because my algorithm says so. So you we never know. So that we would like to tackle this problem as well, and then we said another P, uh, proof of concept which is called uh, smart space use cases. Uh, the basic idea here is like we, we put the sensor and they capture the image uh, every second and then encode it into base64 and then send it, create a new transaction. And uh, you know, at the same time, uh, we run those um, sensor software on the um, Raspberry Pi and then we running a, a object detection as well. So that's that's kind of like a simple architecture that smart space use case. So we 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 capture the image and then you know uh, encode it as a meta metadata, and then running on the uh, object detection, we use the uh, OpenCV version with the uh, SSD mobile net, which is also like open source data sets. And once we get, and then the important part is only two here. <coughs> so if my uh, images capture more than three people, people in the room with seated, but if those people don't have a bot water bottle like this, um, let the virtual human agent recommend some, you know, recommend to, recommend someone to bring that bottle to the uh, different rooms. So that's a basic idea. And then I have a demo here. So I'll, I'll share it to you. By the way, this is uh, the images, and then do, they do no object detection and person detections. And then there is a sensor on the, on the virtual human side, right? Kojiru, the number of people have been increased in the conference room. They may stay long because they have seen it. Why don't you take some drinks for them? You need two of them because we have two more people. Sure, will two bottles be enough? Yes, please bring two bottles. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kojiru. Okay, so that's the basic idea, and then we can we can you know apply to uh, smart home or or home security system. So that's the basic idea of that P, uh, proof of concept. So um, well, we can say those uh, decision making process and then output is can be safe using the blockchain, and then some other uh, AI developers and also a uh, game developer too. So we are uh, developing uh, Connectome SDK so that uh, all the developer can create their, your own virtual human or your new uh, AI models. On the game AI version, uh, we, we provide some desktop application running on the client side, uh, which is uh, the, the simple version of uh, Electron application. And then we provide GUI, so you can actually, you don't have to, you don't even have to write some codes. You just need to, you know, drag and drop and then set, set up some parameters, how your virtual human want to, want to act. And it, it will be running on the PC or mobile or tablet. And also, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we will like to. We are thinking about integrating the GeneFlow version so that you can always trace back uh, what kind of um, you know data or or train model will apply to this the VHA currently you are running. So like you can always you know get the hash link and then you can always trace back. 
uh, on the first process, um, you know, we are going, we are thinking, plug into other provider such as like data provider or computation provider for, for more secure environment uh, computations. And also, uh, we we are very welcome to work with uh, some uh, 3D model designer. If you wanna, you know, if you want your virtual agent want to have different looks, so we are going to have provide some uh, marketplace for uh, virtual human. So let's say you have you got your virtual agent on your own, but you know currently lots of different uh, virtual human uh, providers such as uh, Magic Leap or some other Japanese creators working on it. And the, I, we, I really hope you know, those, uh, those entities are uh, selling their own virtual agent on our, on our network. But as we growing up the, uh, the number of virtual agent, it, it will be really hard to find your own favorite uh, virtual agent on the market. So how can you how can you evaluate how can you find your favorite virtual agent, or how can you tell there might be some like evil or some you know malicious virtual agent or some you know uh, virus in it? How can you tell? Uh, so how how to evaluate virtual agent with our diversity? Uh, as we're thinking of. Think about the Web 2.0 version for evaluation or search engine mechanism. It's there are tons of problems like sponsored content has a uh, priority, or or I really hate the uh, SEO, and also uh, the filtering algorithm can be on the black box, so we never know. And also, you know, uh, there's uh, untrusted feedback, so people can manipulate some you know good or bad feedback. So we, we are, are going to do on the decentralized way, of course, uh, as a crypto economic uh, fashion, uh, we are going to you know, rely on the community. Our, we want our, our marketplace maintained by community using like uh, incentive mechanism or game, uh, game theory. Uh, we are going to implement uh, token cure registry or also a bonding curve mechanism for for uh, uh, price mechanism. For example, uh, we have done a TCR together with the uh, Ocean Protocol from Berlin, and then we we uh, we set the sharing point so like what is the best you know customer service virtual human agent. And as for the bonding curve uh, price mechanism, we have deployed on the, on the uh, marketplace on the GitHub. And then you know when when creator deploy some virtual agent and then and then set up the parameter at the same time, the price will never be manipulated by anyone else because the price is uh, price mechanism or price formula is stored in the blockchain. I mean smart contract. So I will we, will, we are providing some uh, interface for price mechanism. It, it's a very uh, popular one. Some other uh, bonding curve uh, project is using. So um, if you want your own uh, bonding curve formula, you can create your own using those uh, interfaces. And also, uh, we are really uh, focused. We focused on the community development last year. Uh, we been to North America, and we we uh, did uh, some workshop with uh, uh, Stanford University last year, and we did a bunch of uh, meet up there, and then we did also a workshop in Africa, Rwanda, and also we tours in Japan and China and Singapore and collaborating with a bunch of different uh, projects, not only Ethereum. And not but li uh, not last not but least, uh, we are going to have uh, the meetup tonight. So if you are interested in uh, joining us, please uh, scan that QR code. And I think that that is uh, full right now. Just I just checked that out. Like. 
couple minutes ago, but you can still uh, be on the waiting list. So uh, please let me know uh, if you're interested. And that's it for me. Thank you for listening.